I'm going to teach you unit testing and how to write iPhone apps using the test-driven development approach. For this first video, I'm going to introduce you to unit testing class and class functions that you will need to know to do your test. The first thing you want to do is open the Xcode, create a new project, select single view application, and name your file whatever you want. And at the bottom, there's three selections. Make sure you click the middle one, include unit test, and click next. Now go to your folders and find a file that have your test class and open it up. Now let's look at this XC test class. The easiest way to understand this class is write a bunch of print statements and watch it run. I am going to rename the last two functions and also add two more. So once I run the test, I can see what's going on inside each of them when the functions are called. Also, I am going to increase the number of i by 1 and print, the, print it out to see how many times this function is called. Now go to products, select test, or press Ctrl U. Xcode will now execute the test. The test is not going to be very fast. It takes me about somewhere between 10 to 20 seconds. Once the test is done, we're going to open our console and see the messages inside. Now let's look at the um, part that is highlighted. The first line, test example started it. Now let's look at which functions go in first. We have the startup, example one, and then the teardown. Now let's look at the next chunk of messages. It says the first line, test example two started it, and we go through these functions. Startup, example two, and then tear it down, just like the first example. And then the next one, it will be just like the first two. So let's just jump over it and take a look at example number four. Now let's look at example four. We can see it go to the usual route setup and you went to inside the function example four and then it went into the measure and it loop itself ten times. So let's look at these numbers. When you run measure, each time it's gonna give you how fast your algorithm runs inside the measure and you're gonna average out ten times and this will tell you how fast your algorithm will run in the program. Okay, and now I'm going back to the class and added the function name, delete test from example one, and add an extra A in front of the test for example two, and run the test again and see what happens. Now let's look at this test we just run. When I took out the test in the example one and added an extra letter A in front of the test, I actually disable these two functions. So this is one of the features of the test class. Whenever you want to write a test function, your test name have to start with the word test. Otherwise, the program will just skip over your function. I kind of like this feature. Instead of commenting out the whole thing, you can just delete the word test 
or just add a letter in front of it. Make it a lot easier to disable your test. Now I'm going to show you how to use this function to test your code. We're going to type in xc and the compiler is going to show you a bunch of xc assert methods. I'm going to choose one of them, assert not equal. So now we're going to pass in two numbers. Just like the name says, if it's not equal, we're good. Otherwise, the test fails. So in a real test, we can pass in variables and constants and types. This is kind of like a if-else comparison. If these two numbers satisfy not equal, then we're good. Otherwise, we can just we are going to display an error message. Once you're done writing your assert statement, you can go ahead and press the diamond on the side. It's going to run your test. There should also be a diamond next to the function, but sometimes the compiler is a little bit slow, so you might have to wait for it for it to come out. Or you can always press Command U to run the test. So look at the log messages. I ran zero test. And the reason is I didn't put a test in front of my function name. That, so the, the test class just skip my function. So I'm gonna add a test in my function name. I'm gonna and delete these assert statements. I only want to put one. So when I see the error message, it's easier to read. And I'm gonna put number one and one because one is not equal to one. It's kind of obvious. Let me run it and see what happens. Okay, if you have the newest Xcode, this log error window is gonna pop out. If you don't have it, it doesn't really matter. You can go to your preference and set it up. Okay, let's look at the errors. Let's see what it says. So it says one is not equal to one. I'm gonna put another assert not equal and put one and two. One is not equal to two. And let's click on the diamond in front of the function and see what happens. So the air window pop out. I see the same error message. Actually, I'm gonna change these, these two statements around. I'm gonna put one and two in the, for the first one and one and one the second one. So the first one is going to succeed, and the second one is going to fail. OK, so the lock window pop out. And yes, the, the 1 and 2, they're not equal. It passed. The 1 and 1, it did not pass. I'm going to add another one, assert nail, and test if the property we pass in is a nail. If it's not a nail, it will fail. Let's see. I'm going to pass in a nail, integer, and a string just to see. The lock window come out. Actually, I'm just going to close this. It's easier to see it here. So, the last two didn't pass. One is not nail, and a string is not nail. Alright, I'm going to add another one. Actually, I'm going to erase these. I'm going to show you a special case. It's called XC fail, XCT fail. It's going to fail every time you run the function. And I'm going to show you how to use it. 
we can set up a if statement so if something happens you can tell the test class to fail your test so with this if statement you can set up a more complicated test other than just test if two things are equal not equal true false or nil okay I ran the test and a log happens it just it's just tell you it fails I'm gonna add a L statement on this and then print something out when the test did not fail this is one of the things you can do in your real test you can set out a print statement and tell you exactly what happens This time, I'm going to click on the diamond in front of the function. That means you're executing this particular test and not other ones. We don't have other ones, so clicking on this or just press con command U, it will be the same thing. So the test is successful, and you can also look at the log message. It says, I didn't fail. Okay, I'm going to show you another example. This one is going to be slightly different. I'm going to choose assert equal. And then we add two fields. And I'm I actually going to put a message after the second field. So it's going to be, I'm comparing two. If the test fails, it's going to show my message. And actually, I don't want to just put in one and two. I'm going to have two variables. So I'm going to compare assert equal A and B. And A is 1, B is 2, so, so they are not equal. Let's see what happens. So the log message pop out. And look, it says 1 is not equal to 2. That's our custom message. And you can op you can open up the lock, and you can also see it here. One is now equal to two. I'm going to change number A to two, and just to make sure the test can pass if they're equal. Now let's run the test, and it should pass with no problems. So this is pretty much how the test class works. You write a test function, and inside a function, you write a condition, a, a third condition, to see if it passes. Now hold your option key, and click on the view controller. Now the view controller is going to open up on your right. Now I'm going to copy and paste this function right here. All right, this is a pretty simple function. You passing a number, let's say number is 5 and it adds 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and give you a total of all 5 numbers okay so how do we test this function right here I'm gonna delete my test function example and then rename it I just added the word test in front of my function name so in the future, when I look at this text function, I know exactly what I'm testing for. But you can name it whatever you want, as long as you put a test in front of it. The first thing I want to do here is create an instance, a copy of my view controller, so I can access the class function of my view controller. going to access the function name in my instant class so I'm going to write view controller dot summation okay there's a problem right here the Xcode is telling me it cannot find a summation function inside my view controller class well now we're facing with a small problem the compiler is not finding the function to solve this problem, 
Simply click on product and build for test. Once you build it, your compiler can find your function. Now I can access my function. What I want to do is passing a number and create a constant sum to put in the result of my function. The next step is to create assert equal. So in the unit test, the first step you want to do is make it fail. You don't want to make it pass. You won't know if your function will work or not if it doesn't fail. So I'm going to put in a number 54 because I know the sum of 1 to 10 is 55. So I'm going to run this and see if it fails. And indeed, it failed. Now I'm ready for my second step. I'm going to change the number to 55 and run the test again. Let's wait. It's take 2 to 5 seconds for the test. Now I see green diamonds. That means it passed. So this is it for this video and I will make another video dealing with data structures. This is my first YouTube video so if you have any suggestions please leave a comment below. Thank you.